Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily code problem. So today it's another um, graph algorithm actually, and it's called reorder routes to make all paths lead to the city zero. And so what we're given here is a graph that represents the city. And so the nodes here or the vertexes are the cities themselves. So this is city zero, one, three, etc. And the edges are represented as, or the road, sorry, are represented as the edges. So this here is a road that connects city zero and one, and this is a, another road that connects city one and three. Okay, and so these roads actually do have a direction. And so right now, this road goes from zero to one, and that's represented using this adjacency list where you're traveling from zero to one. And then this one, you're traveling from one to three, and you can see that direction here. But what we want to do, and you can kind of see from the title of the question, is we want all of the paths to lead to city number zero, and that's this one right here. And so what we want to do is, since we want all of these roads to be pointing in the direction of city zero, this one's okay because two to three, that's going in the direction of city zero. But this one here, from one to three, we want to switch it. And so that, yes, it's going from three to one now. So this one here, we want to make it three comma one, basically. And this one from zero to one, we want to switch it so it's one comma zero. Okay, and that's basically the question. So um, the solution for this is we want to do a depth first search um, approach for this. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to do perform a depth first search from our city zero and just go down. And whenever we encounter an edge that's going away from zero, then we're going to want to increment our count by one. So we'll have initially our count to zero because we want to return, okay, how many edges are we going to have to switch? And so initially our count is zero. But whenever we encounter, okay, this is an edge that's going away from zero, let's increment that by one. And so now we're at one. And then from one, we see, okay, now this one goes from one to three, which is away from zero. Let's increment that by one and so forth. But whenever we encounter, okay, this one is, there's a incoming edge to this node three, then we just add zero basically. So we don't have to add one in that case, we just add nothing. So when you're dealing with incoming edges, then you know that it's not going away from zero. So you, you can just hop there without adding zero. And this one, since it's an incoming edge, we just add zero and we go to here. And then this one is a outgoing edge, so we wanna add one, okay? And so you can kind of, I hope, understand a little bit that we're actually gonna treat these, even though they have a direction, act as if they don't have any direction at all. And so you just say, okay, if it's an um, outgoing edge, then we're going to add one, right? And so this one's also an outgoing edge when we're doing our depth first search, so we add one. But here we see, oh, it's an incoming edge, so we add zero because we won't have to switch this because it's already pointing to city zero. This one's an incoming edge, so we add zero. And this one's an outgoing edge, so we add one. Okay, so that's our depth first search, and we just navigate using this adjacency list, which represents our graph, and we just add one or zero depending on the direction of the edge. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing is we want to build our graph, and so although this is kind of already provided for us, we want to be able to look up and over one time all of the edges that you can navigate from this current node. And so we'll do that. So we say represent our graph with adjacency list. Great. We'll just call it adjacency and we'll be setting it as a, a default dictionary. Now you should like to import it just for practice.
Great. And so then we say, okay, for every source in destination in our connections, which is, where, is all of our edges there, we're going to want to say, okay, let's update our adjacency list at our source and add, and we're gonna use a tuple and we're gonna say, okay, we can go to this destination from our source. And since this is an outgoing edge, since we're going from source to destination from zero to one, then in that case, we're gonna add one. If you remember, because any outgoing edge from zero to one, since that's outgoing, we wanna add one in that case. So we put a one here. And then now when it's the opposite, when we have an incoming edge to this current node, then we want to add nothing. So it's just zero in that case. So destination to source is zero. Great. And so now what we want to do is say, let's define our debt first search. And we're going to want to return the result of our debt first search. And our current node will initially be zero since we'll start at zero here. And then we want to also keep track of our count, which will also be initially zero. And so typically this kind of templated uh, format for when you're doing depth for search. So we just say, okay, for every um, neighbor with a corresponding weight. And so we, these are the weights zero and one in our adjacency list at our current node. We want to iterate through all our neighbors and we'll once again perform a depth for search and pass in now that neighbor and then the current running count. But the count is going to be incremented dependent on that neighbor's corresponding weight and so we just add that weight here. Awesome. And so since we're just adding kind of the count plus the weight here, we'll want to then update our count every single time we perform that depth for search. And so we'll want it to be returning something. And so in that case, naturally we'll want to return our count at the end of this iteration, but then also we need some kind of base case. And so we'll say, okay, if our uh, node here is in visit, and so this is also kind of a template for performing depth for search is you just have a set that tracks, okay, what nodes have we already visited yet? Because the last thing we want is be kind of caught in a loop and just continuously checking nodes that we already went down, paths that we've already explored before. Say, so, okay, if we already visited this node, then let's just return the count that we passed to it, this one here. Otherwise, we'll want to say, okay, we're visiting, we visited that node. We're doing it right now, actually. Great, let's try running that. Oh, I think I just got these mixed up. It's from collections, import, default dict. Oh, something's wrong here. Let's take a peek. So, Do I get these mixed up? No, don't think so. Right. What do I do wrong here? Okay, no, that makes sense. So basically what went wrong there is, I just kind of was very confused, um, is you also want to be checking just in this loop, okay, have we also visited this node yet? So although we're tr checking here, there are cases where, okay, within this cycle, since we're passing in the weight here, within this um, 
step for search, you may still be adding the weight of that corresponding neighbor who we've already visited before. And so although you won't be kind of performing a depth for search on that neighbor again, you're still using its weight that you've already added prior to that. So you could be accounting for, okay, it's an outwards edge um, from that node several times. And so that's why we got a larger number than we needed to. Um, yeah, so I hope that helped. Um, for the time and space complexity, it would be the uh, number of vertices and the number of edges, since that would be in the worst case, you would travel down every single edge and every single node. And so the, because we're using a depth for search, and naturally we would need a, uh, a stack for that, that's gonna be the exact same thing because we're gonna add to our application stack um, the number of nodes. So yeah, I hope that helped and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Have a great day.